Annie turns on the camera, takes a deep breath, Ooh, fidgets in their seat, and adjusts their shirt. Awesome. Hi, y'all. Welcome to True Heart Talks. My name is Annie. My pronouns are they, them. I'm trans, queer, neurodivergent, and disabled. The topic of today's video is, yes, I'm disabled. No, I'm not faking it. We're going to be touching on a trope about the disability community that people with disabilities are faking. Today, I'm going to share about claiming the term disabled as part of my identity and the subsequent disbelief and gaslighting I've received in the past few years. I want to suggest a paradigm shift that may help us view disability with an open mind and heart. So it's going to get a little juicy. Um, don't switch off. The video theme appears. The background is navy blue. In the top left corner, a light blue bubble moves fluidly. An orange pom-pom, white bubbles, and a yellow squiggle line decorate the frame. A white text reads, Welcome to True Heart Talks. To the right is a photo of Annie looking to the side. The words disappear. A new text says, Claiming disabled as an identity. The video disappears. Welcome to True Heart Talks. My name is Annie Trueheart. My pronouns are they, them. I'm trans and non-binary, queer and disabled. I'm white and have short, dark hair. I have a black t-shirt and a flannel on and I'm sitting in my art room. The walls are bright pink. Behind me on my left is a yellow filing cabinet and a yellow storage bin with art supplies on black shelving. In the center of the wall is a Star Wars poster with Anakin Skywalker on his home planet of Tatooine. On my right are my books and Star Wars figurines on black shelving. Sitting in front of the wall behind me is a gray desk with art supplies and a burning candle. So, let's get into it. A few years ago, around the start of the pandemic, a friend of mine was diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. She's young, she started using a wheelchair, cane, splints, and braces. I was curious about her condition and wanted to be supportive, but didn't really know how to respond. I was ignorant about EDS and even felt conflicted about how to interact with her after her diagnosis. To be honest, I think I've historically viewed folks with disabilities with pity and some sort of savior complex. I think these types of harmful beliefs and attitudes towards disability are common for most of us and are a prominent part of social discourse and what we're taught, whether consciously or subconsciously, but it doesn't make it okay. Only a few years later, I was diagnosed with joint hypermobility and am seeking a diagnosis for EDS myself. The pandemic was a strange and difficult time for all of us, and the onset of mass chaos exacerbated disabilities that I did not have an honest grasp on, nor language or support for how to live with. I was forced to look inward and seek answers and help because I was sinking, and I had been trying to get help for years. After being diagnosed with PTSD, ADHD, autism, OCD, joint hypermobility, and fibromyalgia, I was confronted with the fact that I've been living with disabilities my whole life. With research, connecting with disability communities, attending recovery meetings and going to therapy, I've been practicing getting comfortable with claiming the identity and lived experience of being disabled. And it's been a grieving process. I lived for decades without understanding or having language for my own body-mind experiences, and I'm sad that I've lived most of my life without appropriate support. I've struggled to manage an everyday life by functioning in ways that were difficult for me and not natural to me. I'm currently rotating through the stages of denial, bargaining, testing, and experiencing really nice feelings of acceptance, but just like any grieving process, I shift in and out of different stages. A big source of my grief is addressing ableism and internalized ableism. Along with neurodivergent conditions, I live with fibromyalgia and symptomatic joint hypermobility which affect movement in my body. Currently, as I'm videoing this right now, I'm actually holding my ribs because I have uh, the rib syndrome where they slip and they become really sore and inflamed and uncomfortable, uh, which is associated with uh, joint hypermobility. Growing up and through college, uh, I played sports and exercised daily. I used to be very physical and move a lot. However, when looking at the big picture, my journey in sports shows a lengthy and complex history of injuries, ailments, breathing difficulties, and intense muscle soreness. In addition to developing PTSD, neurodivergence affects my nervous system and inevitably my physical body. The combination of hypermobility, trauma, and unmanaged sensory needs has led to chronic pain and mobility issues for me. 
I'm still active, but my conditions are disabling when they affect my daily activities, my pace, the types of movements I can do, and my breathing patterns. Now I approach physical activity more carefully and adjust my body, the time frames, the intensity, in order to be safe and protect my joints, muscles, and my energy levels. And some activities I just can't do anymore. And some things I'll have to recondition myself to be able to do again, and it may take a lot of time and patience and an adjusted expectation. I believe the biggest obstacles about disability is the social stigma associated with disabilities. Society actively scrutinizes and is fearful of, rejects, pities, infantilizes, dehumanizes, gaslights, and denies the reality of living with disabilities. In the past few years since advocating for my needs and living in my truth, I've experienced a host of microaggressions, discrimination, and violence for asking for support and accommodations. I've received harsh and even violent treatment for simply slowing down, being vulnerable, and tending to my needs. Strangers and family members furiously attempt to gaslight me out of being in touch with my own experiences of disability. I have some practice with that as a queer person and a, and a trans person of like to be gaslit out of your own experience or knowing what it is that you're experiencing. Because of many of my disabilities being neuropsych related, my symptoms are not necessarily visible all the time unless you know what you're looking for. It takes effort, time, and professional assessment for someone to see behavioral patterns that are associated with things like ADHD, autism, or OCD. Additionally, I've learned to mask or camouflage my neurodivergence, which serves to hide traits that are atypical, making it more difficult to see what's going on for me. Unless you're also neurospicy too, we know how to recognize each other. Even after professional assessment and evaluations, several therapists, psychologists, physicians didn't even believe me when I had self-diagnosed with autism and OCD. I was trying to seek out the support and help that I needed because therapeutic um, techniques had not been working. I'd been going to therapy since 2013. It's 2024 now, and I just received diagnoses for autism and OCD in 2023. So uh, 10 years later, several of the psychologists or the therapists that were seeing me didn't believe that I was autistic because I am not cognitively disabled. Um, so it took over two years to be assessed with my trans identity and a history of masking in mind to be taken seriously and officially diagnosed as autistic and an ocd -er. And I've experienced OCD symptoms since I was eight years old. That's the first time that I can remember experiencing um, obsessive compulsiveness. So the combination of incorporating sensory aids, using stem toys, unmasking, walking with a cane, and openly sharing about my experiences has led to mistreatment and even harassment. As far as conditions ex affecting my ability to move, I am ambulatory and use mobility aids when I have flare-ups. Due to symptoms that accompany fibro and hypermobility, combined with long-term nervous system dysregulation and managing, trying to manage proprioceptive and interoceptive input, um, I struggle with breathing and moving safely in my environment. And some days walking feels difficult on my knees, ankles, hips, and like my ribs. They've been inflamed for the past few weeks. And those symptoms co-occur with different conditions too. So for example, if I'm struggling with breathing because of some sort of pain flare-up, but then I'm also having OCD obsessions, which gives me anxiety, in that happening, my spine and my back tenses up, and then I can have a flare-up near one of my herniated discs. I have multiple herniated discs in my spine. Or if my patellofemoral syndrome causes knee pain and swelling, my low back can lock up if I'm favoring one leg or the other during a, a certain period of time, like maybe for a week or something. I also experience numbness and tingling in my limbs that affect my balance. I have joint pain and instability, herniated discs, fatigue, breathlessness, other neurological conditions like dizziness, um, uh, what is it called? Presyncope, uh, where I've like almost fainted doing very light weight type of work. And I often dissociate in public. So a cane, for instance, a mobility aid helps me feel supported and relieved when I use it. I can breathe better. It helps ground me through proprioceptive input. Although it's a really simple way to feel supported, just using a cane. It has been extremely intimidating to use. I started getting harassed by security guards after using mobility aids and sensory aids, such as uh, noise-canceling headphones. 
One day I was walking into the library with my with my headphones on and a cane and a guard stopped me and asked, is that your cane? Another guard wa- who was paying a lot of attention to me, this was a different time. So this was happening like over uh, the span of a few months. Um, another guard was paying a lot of attention to me and ended up following me into the bathroom. And I ended up confronting him and asked why he was following me. And he said, well, some people are odd. So there's this, you know, thing about the way that I move or the way that I move through space and then the things that I'm experiencing such as like hypersensitivity or just my queer expressiveness and all of these things converging that it's like there's this disbelief that I exist somehow or that the conditions that I have are actually happening. Another situation, a few months ago an older woman crossed my path at Kroger, a grocery chain here in Louisville. Um, I'm not sure where else they are, and inserted herself in a lighthearted manner. You're too young to have a knee problem. She was a total stranger, and it wasn't even my knee that was hurting that day. Also, I had to remove my flannel. I responded that I am young, and I have conditions that you don't know about. When it comes to neuropsych conditions, I've been told that I don't have PTSD by strangers and family alike. I've been diagnosed with PTSD several times by multiple psychologists and I've shared my experience with PTSD in an online group and someone literally said to me you don't have PTSD. Family members have been dismissive and even abusive after opening up about my disabilities and asking them for support. My parents have said hurtful things after I asked them for help with housing such as you're not disabled and that I need to try harder and even that I'm a piece of This is on brand for them, given the fact that they have never had me formally assessed for neurodivergence um, growing up, and they attributed countless accidents, injuries, breathing issues, social difficulties, chalking it up to coincidence or, again, like a cause of my own or that I'm just not trying hard enough. After applying for disability benefits for the second time, so many people have tried to push jobs onto me when I have explicitly stated that I need to rest and that I'm trying to seek appropriate medical diagnosis and care for my conditions so I can manage my experiences in daily life better. All of these experiences had led me to questioning my own reality. Am I really sensitive to noise? Do I really need a cane if I'm ambulatory? Am I just being weak? Maybe I should just think positively and my energy levels will increase and I can go for longer. With the amount of times that I've been questioned or harassed, violated, and belittled simply for, again, talking about what I'm experiencing, using disability aids that make my life a little bit easier, and asking for accommodations, I feel pressured to just go through pain so that people don't think I'm faking it. Even though I'm in a constant state of pain, or when I'm in an immense amount of pain, Um, feeling like I don't have the right to actually feel it. I want to be believed because I need rest and recovery. My body has been overactivated and maxed out for so many years, and I'm just tired. I am exhausted. I and we are living in a dystopian nightmare. I genuinely want us to wake up from it so we can live in a reality in which our communities actually believe us, that we're encouraged to be gentle with ourselves, and that we can get the help that we need and so that we can really grasp that there's nothing lazy, evil, or wrong for tending to our disabilities or for having disabilities, for talking about them, or for needing to be accommodated or needing rest because of conditions that we live with. The video theme appears. A white text says, A Humanistic Approach to Disability. The video disappears. So I want to invite us to take a humanistic perspective on the notion that I or other people would fake their disabilities in the first place. In future videos, I'd like to explore the historical and legal context of ableist beliefs, but today I want to focus on shifting our skepticism about disability. Let's say we believe that humans behave motivationally towards our needs, that our needs are important and we deserve to have them met. If we take that approach, then if I'm saying that something is wrong with me or that I'm experiencing pain or that I am having trouble doing something and that I want and need help, to deny that help would would just be mean. It's just mean, right? And if society views my disabilities, ones that I'm born with or conditions that I've developed over time as some sort of moral failing, 
and I really do have disabilities, and society just doesn't want to believe them, then the underlying cause of my disabilities won't truly be acknowledged and my needs will not be identified or met due to the negative social perception and people perceiving it as some sort of weakness, right? If there's a stigma and I'm not getting my needs met, I won't actually have the tools to help me live a better quality of life either. I won't be offered help. I'll be treated poorly. All of this creates more trauma. A harsh, judgmental mindset about folks with disabilities leads to an uncaring society full of people with unmet needs. We are just all disconnected from each other's humanity. I feel like with a humanistic approach, we can become curious about disabilities we haven't heard of or that we don't understand versus being judgmental or skeptical about them. I really wish that we could give up the notion altogether that people fake disability. If I am disabled and experiencing pain and distress, or I need to be accommodated in some way, then assuming I'm lying about my experience to get attention or some other train of thought that validates that belief, then assuming that I'm lying about my experience to get attention violates my federal and state rights to have my needs met and to be accommodated. When I experience something in my body and it hurts, or I'm experiencing neurological symptoms such as numbness, physiological symptoms such as fatigue, difficulty breathing, joint pain in multiple sites, or neuropsych symptoms such as hypervigilance or dissociation. If a stranger does not know what they're looking for, nor believes me when I say, I'm experiencing numbness and tingling, or I'm having an emotional flashback, that doesn't mean I'm not experiencing those things. Denying agency and autonomy to members of our community violates our collective need to survive as a species and to take care of each other. If people need support, how would ignoring us or denying us that support be helpful to society when we are society? <laughs> if we believe disability is normal and natural part of human experience, we have the opportunity to re-examine our own needs. Acknowledging and accepting that it's okay to rest, it's okay to take a break, it's okay to have needs, it's okay to have feelings, it's okay to be accommodated, it's okay to ask for help, it's okay to be vulnerable. I think that this is terrifying for Americans to have to admit that our identity has been built on oppressive and harmful and fear-based philosophies about our worthiness and belongingness as humans based on what we can physically do, based on able-bodiedness. We're all going to experience old age, disability, and eventually death at some point. And we're not perfect. We're not invincible. So, I'm here to say, yes, I am disabled. No, I'm not faking it. I have the right to share and to hold to my truth that I'm experiencing these things. I reserve the right to autonomy over my experience, and I deserve to be believed, respected, and accommodated. I deserve to rest, to slow down, and to take care of my needs. And so do you. Disability justice is justice for all. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos, and take care. The video theme appears with a navy background, light blue moving blob, bubbles, and squiggly patterns. A white text reads, thanks for watching. A red button says subscribe in white letters below. To the left is an image of Annie. They have a green t-shirt on and they're smiling gently.